Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new segment we call This Week in Disney History. If you like this, please leave a comment down below letting me know, hit the like button, and consider subscribing. Let's get right into it. We're going to go back to October 9th, 1956, where Walt Disney penned a letter to the future to be placed in a time capsule. He called it the prediction of entertainment in a world 50 years from now. Staying on October 9th, we go to 1968, where Pete Docter, the animator, film director, screenwriter, and voice actor, is born. He started at Pixar at age 21. He was the third animator on the staff, and he was the 10th person hired by Pixar. Kind of cool. Today, he's best known for directing uh, the animated feature films such as Monsters, Inc., Up, Inside Out, and he is a key figure and collaborator at Pixar. He's also been an integral part of such classics as Toy Story, Toy Story 2, A Bug's Life, Cars, Wally. Talk about a legend. Now we're going to jump to 1999, where the singing group, 98 Degrees, they ended up doing the holiday special, which was filmed at Walt Disney World's Animal Kingdom for the Very Merry Christmas Parade. Staying on October 9th, we go to 2003. Epcot closed early that day at 3 because they were having a very special press event for the grand opening of Mission Space. That's right. The dedication was presided over by Walt Disney Company Chairman and CEO Michael Eisner. Also in attendance were legendary astronauts such as Buzz Aldrin, Jim Lovell, and Wally Shura. The event also included, which was beamed in, remarks and well wishes from Russian cosmonaut commander Yuri Melanchenko and NASA science officer Ed Liu who were both aboard the International Space Station at the time. Sugar Ray and the B-52s performed on the Fountain Stage at Epcot after the Mission Space ceremony and prior to the evening's display of illuminations. Staying on October 9th in 2016, the Main Street Electrical Parade gave its final performance at Walt Disney World. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Let's move over to October 10th. Let's go back to 1967, where Grammy-winning soundtrack composer Michael Guashino was born in Riverside Township, New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. Uh, he first started out writing music for video games, but we know him today as writing amazing scores, and his Disney credits include Sky High, Ratatouille, Up, Coco, and The Incredibles 2. He's also done soundtracks for In the Parks as well. What a legend. Staying on October 10th, we go to 1997, where the science fiction comedy feature Rocket Man was released by Walt Disney Pictures. Staying on October 10th, we jump to 2017, where the very last Star Jets attraction closed on this day at Tokyo Disneyland. It was a rocket spinner attraction similar uh, to the one in Florida's Magic Kingdom. It opened with the park on April 15, 1983, and sadly, it was the last one to close. Let's go back to October 11th, 1955 where ticket books started to become available for the very first time at the brand new Disneyland theme park in Anaheim. It was a day at Disneyland and it contained 3A, 2B, and 3C tickets. D tickets won't be added to the following year and E tickets would be added in 1959. Staying on October 11th, we jumped to 1982, where we had the newly opened Epcot Center and the American Adventure Pavilion officially opened the American Adventure Building. This single large building designed in a colonial style, it contained the American Adventure Show and the Whole of Flags exhibit. The American Adventure Show, narrated by audio animatronic figures such as Ben Franklin and Mark Twain, takes guests on a trip through America's history. Across from that pavilion is the American Gardens Theater, which is the outdoor amphitheater which still to this day hosts concerts. Also on October 11th in 2022, actress and singer Angela Lansbury, who played various roles across film, stage, and television, passed away at the age of 96 in Los Angeles, California. She was born in London back in 1925, and her career spanned eight decades. Disney fans would know her best. She appeared in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, and also Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast. She also played the Balloon Lady in Mary Poppins Returns. She was inducted as a Disney legend in 1995. Let's go to October 12th, 1986, where the Golden Horseshoe Review at Disneyland's Frontierland officially closed. On this night, that show, which held the Guinness World Record for the greatest number of performances of any theatrical production, featured Betty Taylor, who played Slewfoot Sue for 30 years and was the longest running cast member at the time. Staying with October 12th, let's jump to 1995, where Walt Disney World welcomed its 500 millionth guest, Michelle Davis. Also, in 1995, on October 12th, the extraterrestrial alien encounter, often abbreviated as an uh, alien encounter, a theater in the round attraction located in Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom closed at Walt Disney World. It first opened back in June of 95, 
and it was a co-production between Walt Disney Imagineering and Lucasfilm. Although only opening in 1995, it was a cult classic among Disney fans, and it would be later replaced with Stitch's Great Escape. Jumping to 2008, that day was the final day of operation for the Sun Wheel out at Disney California Adventure. It would be turned eventually into Mickey's Fun Wheel opening in 2009. In 2010, Mulholland Madness, an opening day attraction at Disney's California Adventure, would close. It would get refurbished and turned into Goofy's Sky School. Lastly on this day in history, 2013, more than 23,000 Disney fans from all across Japan gathered for three days of dazzling presentations, special screenings, and eye-popping exhibits, as well as some concerts at the very first D23 Expo Japan held at the Tokyo Disney Resort. Let's head over to October 13th. Let's go back to 1960, where Walt Disney returns to his boyhood home of Marceline, Missouri to help dedicate the Walt Disney Elementary, a brand new public school. He actually arrived by train, and it was the first time that the Santa Fe Super Chief ever stopped in Marceline. Walt donated some playground equipment, as well as a flagpole that had flown flags in the 1960 Winter Olympic ceremonies in California. Going back to October 13th, 1978, it's announced that Mickey Mouse will receive his very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He would get that star next month on his 50th birthday. Going to October 13th, 1993, Touchstone Pictures' The Nightmare Before Christmas officially opened and it debuted in New York City. It was produced and co-written by Tim Burton and is still a classic today and you can see it in the parks almost everywhere. Going back to October 13th, 1999, Disney legend Van Arsdale France, who established the Disney University, sadly passed away at the age of 87. Mr. France also developed the very basic idea that he called the looking glass self, meaning that if a staff member smiled, the customer would smile as well. Going to October 13th, 2006, the Walt Disney World annual pass holders were invited to experience the Seas of Nemo and Friends, a brand new attraction over at Epcot. Let's go back to October 14th, 1926, where A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh was first published by Muthun & Co. in London, England. This was the first volume of many more to come. Going back to October 14th, 1971, Walt Disney World's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which was based on the movie, opened at the only 14-day-old Magic Kingdom. It featured 12 38-passenger, 39 including the operator, submarines in an 11 and a half million gallon tank. It was a very close cousin to Disneyland's submarine voyage, which opened back in 1959. The two rides share many of the same elements and animatronics. Going back to October 14th, 2001, it was the final performance of Disney's Steps in Time at the Hyperion Theater at Disney's California Adventure. Cast members from all over the resort were invited to go see the very last show. Going back to October 14th, 2003, the Travel Channel debuted Disneyland Resort behind the scenes for the very first time. That same day in 2004, bidding began on eBay for a very unique experience, and I love this. On eBay, they were auctioning off where you could become the 1,000th ghost experience. The winning bidder will have their own personalized tombstone immortalized at the classic Anaheim Park attraction. This unique Gravestone Marker will bear the winner's first name and a humorous epitaph which was inspired by the winner's hobbies or interest. The winning bid, which happened on October 28th, was won by Jay Sharp, a 37-year-old from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who attended his own midnight burial at Disneyland to become an honorary resident of the park's famous Haunted Mansion attraction. He was a doctor and healthcare attorney Sharp paid $37,400 on eBay to become immortalized on the Haunted Mansion tombstone. He was the very first member of the public ever to do so. His tombstone read, J, doctor, lawyer, legal clerk, forever buried in his work. All proceeds from that auction went to the both Anaheim and Baton Rouge chapters of the Boy and Girls Clubs of America. I love that. That same day in 2006, previews began for Mary Poppins, a co-production between Disney and Cameron McIntosh at the New Amsterdam Theater in New York City. Already a major hit in London, the new musical officially opened on Broadway November 16th. That same day in 2008, Walt Disney World's newest restaurant, T-Rex, a dinosaur-themed eatery, would open in then downtown Disney. Going back to that same day in 2009, wow, what a busy day. Walt Disney World opened in Epcot, the sum of all thrills. 
On October 14th, 1971, Life Magazine showed us the brand new Disney World right here in Florida. On the cover was a color photo of 1,500 Disney employees posing right in front of Cinderella's castle. In 1996, the Main Street Electrical Parade at Disneyland gave its final performance, or so they thought. It would go on to make six different comebacks, uh, with the last run ending on September 1st, 2022. They said it's going to come back. We'll see. That day in 1997, New York City began its previews for The Lion King on Broadway. The following year, on October 14th, which would be 1998, Disney World's newest show, Fantasmic, debuted at the Hollywood Hills Amphitheater, located at Disney MGM Studios, now at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It was a 26-minute show. It required 88 people, and it still is running, and it's incredible. We love Fantasmic. 15 years later, Walt Disney World Resort would celebrate the 15-year anniversary of Fantasmic, where they first debuted the glow with the show ear technology at Disney's Hollywood Studios. On October 14th, 2016, Hawaiian Airlines, in collaboration with Walt Disney Studios, unveiled the first of three custom Airbus A330s, adorning the imagery from the highly anticipated Moana. The inaugural decal design featured four characters from the movie uh, right there on the side of Hawaiian Airlines fuselage. And lastly for this week, going back to 2019, the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra began performances at their new location inside Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. The renovation of Meisner's Lounge, uh, which was on the second level, moved the orchestra down to the floor. Sadly, they would uh, later become the Disney Society Orchestra at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And on October 3rd, after 32 years, they would have their very last show. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know your most iconic moment out of all these dates down below in the comments. If you want to see more of this every week, please let me know down below. If you haven't hit the like button yet, now is the time. And consider subscribing. Check out our Discord and all of our socials down below. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you real soon.